Hi everyone, my name is Dennis and this is my video about cleaning your brewery. I'm going to run through the full cleaning cycle and give you some tips and tricks that I've developed over my time with brewery that will hopefully help you in running the cleaning cycle on your brewery. Now, yesterday I did a full brew of the Hopus Pocus and I left it after I drained all of the wort out into my fermenter. So it's looking a bit crusty and that's intentional. I wanted to have pretty much worst case scenario and show you how Brewery's automatic cleaning cycle will work to clean out pretty much everything that's in there. So I've taken the grain out of the mash tank but the first thing I'm going to do now is take the hop cages out. So those all come out and you take all of the hops that's left in there out, you either put it on your garden, you put it in your compost, give it to somebody else who's got a garden um, and then put the rest of the hop cage into your dishwasher. And the same goes for the false bottom. I've still got the sediments left in the bottom of the boil tank, so I want to get rid of those first before I start the cleaning process. So we'll do that now by going through and doing in the extras menu a full drain. I don't need the hops tanks done and I don't need the mashing tank done because I've already done those. So we'll do I start draining on that. So now Brewery's finished the full drain. Um, we've now got an empty Brewery, but it's all pretty murky as you can see. Cleaning cycle by going in to the extras menu and do a full clean. Now the full clean has got a number of different cycles that it goes through. So the first part of it is exactly the same as the short clean where it just runs fresh water through both of the tanks constantly to flush out the worst of the sediment that you've got left in there. The second stage is to take in about 10 litres of water into the boiling tank and then heat that up to about 60 or 70 degrees centigrade. It then takes that and runs that through the hop cages, recirculating around um, together with the washing tablets that does the majority of the cleaning cycle. After it's finished that, it then takes that water and pumps it back over to the mash tank to clean that side of it. So now we're ready to go, we'll start the pr cleaning process and the first thing it'll do is start the water in there. So you can see now we've got water recirculating and coming into the, the boiling tank and circulating straight out into the drain hose. So now is the opportunity to get the rest of your sediment out that you've got there and just clean out as much gunk as you can. Don't try to get too much of the stuff that's in there out that's really caked onto the edges because as the water heats up through the second part of the process, it's going to be much easier to get all of that off the sides of the tank with it all heated up and with the steam being generated from that hot water there. Right now I'm going to just get what I can of all of the sediment off the side. And you can also use the brush. But as I said, don't worry too much about the stuff that's on the top of the mash tank or the boil tank because we'll get that off later. As you're cleaning the top of the tanks, make sure that you don't end up with any water around the top of this white part here. This has got all the electronics in it and you definitely don't want to get water going down the back of that or you'll probably damage through it. Just watch also, you're probably going to have some gunk spills up on the top of the lids here, so get those clean as well. That's my chance to start trying out this little thing that I've got. It's from AliExpress, it only cost me a couple of dollars. The thing about this compared to this is that at the tip of this, you've got a metal loop that holds all of the bristles in. So it's actually really hard to use this to clean the hot cages. So instead I'm going to try this, which has got sponge all the way at the end. Now, you can use a sponge to try and clean the hot cages, but my hand's just too big to actually fit through down into the hot cages. So um, I think this is going to do a much better job. Now, 
I'm going to do this as it's, it's, it's just finished the end of the first cycle of cleaning and so I'm going to use this to agitate the water that's left in here and try and get as much of sediments that have been dislodged out through the drain cycle. First things that it does always is drain the hot cages and then it'll go through and drain the boiling tank and then the mash tank. Now you can still see that there's stuff left at the top of each of these tanks uh, that I haven't bothered to clean off properly with the cloth. I'm going to leave that until the heating process and use the steam that comes off that to assist in getting all of that gum cloth. Right, so that's the first stage of the cleaning process finished and it's now prompting me to add two dishwashing tablets into the hot cages and you add those into hot cages one and two, it doesn't really matter, but one into each of those and tell it to continue. Now the next thing it's going to do is fill up the boiling tank with about 5 to 10 litres of water. Now that the water is up to about 60 degrees, it's got enough steam coming off here, you can actually see it. And while I had the lid closed, it was effectively steaming off a lot of the rest of the gunk that's been left around there. So now what I'm going to do is use the brush that came with Brewy to go and get the rest of the stuff that was on the edges of the tank off like that. And it's actually a lot easier to do it this way than to try and str struggle with a sponge to do it. Now the reason I don't use a sponge now is because the water is 60 degrees and I'll actually burn myself if I try to use the sponge. But this works just fine. Also, it's got the dishwashing tablet that's dissolved now, which gives it a bit of time. Too, I'm going to try and use my new little brush to make sure that I get all of the rest of the gum out of the hot tanks as well. the end of the cleaning cycle. Now just wanted to talk a little bit about the other two cleaning cycles that are in Brewery. So that was the end of the full cleaning cycle. So the, you've also got a sanitizing clean and a quick clean. Now the quick clean is effectively the same as the first part of the full clean which is just running the water through each of the, the, the tanks um, continuously and cycling it straight out. Useful if you just want to do a quick cycle of getting rid of everything that's been left after a single brew. You can also do that as a quick clean straight after you brew and then do a full clean later on when you do have time if uh, it's rather late when you've end up, ended up finishing your brew. The other one is the sanitizing clean. Now I use that if I've left brewery for a period of time, maybe a month since my last brew. It just allows you to, to do a, a, a proper high temperature cycle of all of the, the water through the pipes just to make sure that if there was anything that's been left in there over that time then it's got a chance to, to scold it and get it out of the system. So 
that's all of the cleaning cycles. I've showed you the full cleaning cycle. I hope that's been useful for you. And if you've got any questions, hit me up. Just to recount the particular tips that I've got, don't try to clean all of the insides of the tanks during the first water cycle. Wait until it's actually heated up and use the brush. Uh, instead taking advantage of all of the steam. As you're draining the hot tanks or as you see the hot tanks draining, add an extra little bit of water into each of them. It just agitates the sediment built up at the bottom of each of those tanks and make sure that all of those are clean all the way through. And that's it. Thanks for watching.